just talking to myself out here. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, well, as you can see, I'm in my dirty clothes. It's about eight o'clock at night and I feel like changing my brake pads. So that's exactly what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna change my front brake pads. So let's get started. Of course, we're gonna use the jack everyone loves. Old trusty scissor. So the reason being why I don't use something more sophisticated like this is because I'm a little lower than most cars and uh, the struggle is pretty real when you're trying to get under it. And yeah, you know, I could pull up on a piece of wood, you know, go up on a little block or something, but you know, I don't have the time to do that. So I just uh, end up using this bad boy right here and it seems to work for me pretty well. So. I'm gonna keep using it till it uh, kills me. And FYI, I use this thing, but I also I also have a plan B, and which is uh, this thing, a jack stand. And I always place that near it, so just in case the scissor jack fails on me, boom, I got a little safety net right here. See, I, I kinda sorta know what I'm doing. I still wouldn't try this at home. You can see how easy scissor, scissor will just slide right under. Slides right under, no problems, no issues. So I just continue to use her. Hasn't failed me yet. Hope I didn't jinx myself. And before we start to crank this up into the air, we're gonna be sure to uh, break free our lug nuts so we don't have to yank on them when the wheels are off the ground and they'll start spinning and it just won't be fun. So we're gonna break them loose real quick. I happen to have one of these cool little like star things. It really comes in handy because it has all different sizes on each side all different sizes on each side. Just find the right side with the right size, fit your lug nut and be happy. No. Yes. Go into a star pattern. Star pattern is the right way. Voila, all of them are broke free. Now we can lift the car up. Takes the wind right out of you. Some real labor right there. All right, now let's find a place where we can set this safely. Woo, almost broke old lighty here. All right, so I just placed my jack stand over here. Sure, I'll get some crap for that location, but right under like a frame rail there, so I feel safe. That's gonna be my safety net right there. Let's go on ahead and get the rest of these lug nuts off. This thing just makes it way easier. Let it spin, baby. Whoa. Whoa. We got all the lug nuts off. Let's get this tire off here. Or should I say wheel? Don't want to offend anybody out there in the wheel world. All right, so now we got the wheel off, we can kind of take a look at what we're working with here. Got my rotor, my slotted rotors. I think they're also stop tech. And you cannot really see much, but you can barely see some meat. There's actually a little bit of meat left on that pad. Just a tiny little bit left on that pad. And I'm sure the inside one's even worse. But the cool thing about the Subaru, or this, I guess this year of Subaru, I don't know if it's, if it relates to all years and makes and models, but you actually don't have to remove the caliper to get the pads out. It's pretty cool. They just slide off right here, right on the top. They just slide right up and out. I'm going to have to show you that right now. So as you can see, I kind of turned the wheel a little bit to get a better, uh, better, better approach at this. We can get the brake pads out a lot easier now since there's more room to work. So let's go on ahead and start by removing, there's a little clip right here, retaining these two pins. So we're gonna get that out and then we're gonna bang the pins through and hopefully these will come out. We'll see, let's do it. So there's this little pin right here and we're gonna push it down and push it out. There's this little lip that goes through that hole. The spring clip is actually retaining these two pins, so each side it'll pull out of it. And there you have it. Just remember what which way the orientation is so you're not confused a little later or when you're going to put it all back together. I, I find it a lot easier to place the parts as they actually came off. So that's just a little tip that I like to pass on. So I usually just place it the exact way that I pulled it out just to make it easier. I know it's not rocket science, but you know. So these pins are gonna pull towards you since the clips are out now. 
Be careful because this thing will, it'll spring off. I forget what side does it, but watch. <laughs> I told you it was going to spring off. So just heads up on that and just take note of how the orientation was. This little bed goes on the underside of this pin. This gets pushed down. Spring that down, push it through, hence why <laughs> it sprung out. Keep that in mind, just watch out. Make sure there's no bystanders around. You don't wanna poke anybody's eye out or something. So we're gonna do the same for this pin, just pop it out. Same thing with the pins. We're gonna put it on the ground like this, the way they came out. Bam, bam. Exact orientation how I pulled them out. I guess I can point out how thin my pad is. This is the meat right here that gets worn down over time onto the rotor. Barely even see anything right there. So this definitely needed to be changed and this one was getting close. So the little chirpers that are on these pads, check it out. Don't recommend it, but if your brake pads start chirping, that's an indication of them being really low and you should replace them soon. But sometimes I can't replace them right away, so I just end up bending these little chirpers up both sides so it'll stop chirping on me until I get the brake pads. But I don't recommend that because you will forget and uh, you might be uh, without brakes sometimes. So not recommended, but that's what I do. Once again, don't do what I do. All right, now we can pull out the pin or the pads and we're more than likely gonna have to compress the caliper. That's where a clamp will come in handy. All right, so here's that clamp I'm talking about. This is gonna compress the caliper, relieve the pressure so you can slip the brake pad right out. I've done this in the past, kinda know what I'm doing. So this is the way I tackle it, this is the way I do it, so. And if you're a little anal about scratching any of the surface of the caliper, you can go on ahead and put a, a towel right on there. See so if you don't wanna scratch your paint on this side, the little rag will come in handy. So you can just place that right there. And I like to get it, compress it, just pretty much any way it'll get a bite on there. I just get a little, little bite on the edge of the brake pad and a little bite on the edge of the actual caliper. It'll start compressing very slowly. And then when it starts to work, your, your brake pad will start wiggling because the pistons are compressed. You just gotta keep working at it until these things will wiggle right out. It does take some pressure. Sometimes, if you got large muscles, sometimes you can just use your muscles and get it right out of there. That's one worn out brake pad. Woo, it's hot in this garage. It's like 85, 90 degrees in here. I'm gonna open up a door. This one might be able to wiggle out too. Yeah, it'll slide right out. But getting the new ones in there is gonna be quite a bit tougher. I'm gonna go grab the new pair and show you how much beef is on those. It's a lot of meat. What the? Um, the heck are these? These are not even the right ones. What in the world? Let me check the other box. Oh, they better not have screwed me. I'm really hoping those were the rears. There we go. There we go. I picked the wrong box. Huh, silly me. And, oh, it comes with new hardware too? I don't have to reuse all this old stuff. I've never seen them actually include the hardware and everything, so. Awesome, good job, Stop Tech. I love you. Before I go and try and put the brand new brake pads on, I'm gonna compress the pistons as much as I can, so it'll make the job a lot easier. Like so. These things are beefy, man. Beefy, beefy. And let's just double check they are the right ones. Yeah, look at the meat. Just a little comparison here. See the different meats? The different meats? Nothing beefy. All right, so before, there's actually one thing I'm gonna add and it's a little bit of, I'm gonna go get it and show you. So the stuff I add to the back of the uh, brake pad is called Disc Brake Quiet. And it actually does what it says, stops, brakes, squeaks, and squeals. Would you imagine that? You don't really need much of this stuff, just a little dab, yeah, something like that. And the little trippers are gonna be on the front side, so it's gonna be like this. I'm gonna slide this in. Pistons are still compressed, which makes this job a lot easier. Just gonna let that stay there, and we're gonna slide in the rear pad now. Get a little bit of this red miracle lube. And we're gonna line up the holes 
Looks like I might have to compress the piston a little more on this side. Yeah, it's going in quite a bit. Let's see if I can get this one a little bit more. All right, good. Now let's slide this baby in. Come on, you beefy bitch. <laughs> get in your hole. Oh, maybe that'll work better. Ha. I guess I just kind of wiggle the rotor a little bit. Give you some more room. All right, we got them set in place. Now we're gonna go move on to the little hardwares. Move on to the little goodie bag they supplied for you. Okay, so first we're gonna move on to, we're gonna get this thing just right. We kinda know how it goes. It's gonna be the smaller side on the bottom. And this is gonna spring down. We're gonna feed the pins back on. I'm gonna feed the pins back in, be sure the pin actually goes through the hole on the brake pad under this, under the little retainer clip. Have to lift it up a little bit to line it up. There it goes. Wiggle, wiggle, shake, and boom. Same thing with the top side. We're gonna feed it all the way in. So here, make sure it goes through the top hole on the brake pad. Make sure that's right. This is gonna bend down a little bit because this pin is actually gonna slide under, as we know and pull that up push that through bam there we go we're locked in last things last <laughs> last but not least we need this thing this will save your life you need it don't forget it so what i find the easiest way is to actually turn the pin until the holes kind of line up the way you want them to line up it's going to be just like that so you kind of want the holes to be you know at the right angle so we get the pin in the bottom side the top and then this is going to spring down and pop in phone's ringing that's pretty much this is it that's locked in just right so the first time you push on the pedal this will all tighten up and you'll be good to go so this is actually going to conclude um this side of putting the brake pads in it's really not that difficult at all i mean the hardest thing is compressing the pistons with the clamp, but some people don't know how to do it and that's why I'm making this video to show them that it really isn't that bad. You can do it yourself, no problem. Just double check everything, make sure you feel comfortable with how you did it. I've done this a handful of times and pretty confident I did it correctly. So we're gonna go on ahead and put the wheel back on, lower it and move on to the other side. So let's go. Don't forget your jack stand. I hate when this happens. <laughs> what a noob. Don't forget to torque your nuts. One more side to go. It's actually called the dark side because I got the black plastic dip on this side. So, this side's a little evil, you know what I'm saying? Break them nuts free. Cool, let's go get scissor. There you are. And don't forget Jackie. All right, so here we go again with the screwdriver. I mean, pretty much do what we did over there the exact same way, um, nothing different on this side so I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna speed it up a bit because it's just probably gonna bore you to see the whole process identical to how it's done on the other side so I'm gonna get started here heads up it's gonna spring forward you it's gonna move move the camera out of the way see ya ow boing And with the new meats, the new meats. <laughs> Almost forgot the stop squeaks. Come on, you know the next step. We're gonna put the pins in. Last step is this little pin. It'll save your life. Pretty much experts at this by now, right? 
Bam, son, look at that, bam, snapped right into place. We are good to go. And that's how you do a brake job, right there. All right, so we're ready to throw the wheel back on and I'm gonna actually go for a test drive. It's about nine o'clock at night, so it really only took me around an hour to do this. So I'm gonna throw the wheel on, finish this up, and uh, wrap up the video. All right, Jackie, I mean, <laughs> scissor, another successful mission complete. Last thing, don't forget to torque your nets. Done. All right, guys, well, that's actually gonna wrap up this video. Really nothing to it. I just showed you, it took me just about an hour to do it. Um, for those of you that aren't filming it, it'll go a lot quicker because when you film something, it takes seems to take at least twice as long because you gotta get the right angles and all that stuff, but it's really a straightforward job. Any beginner can do it, really. I mean, if I could do it, anyone could do it type of thing. Another successful in the garage video complete. And next thing I need to do is go and seat the brake pads into the rotor. So it's kind of like a break-in period type of thing. I'm going ahead and Google that and see what goes into breaking the brake pads in. Breaking the brake pads in. And we're going to go from there. So I think the next video is going to be the rear pads install. And then after that, I'm going to do the master cylinder brace as well. So couple videos planned up for you guys so stay tuned and thanks for watching see you on the next episode see you guys what's up guys well we meet again the video isn't over yet so if you stay till this long you get to watch me uh, bed in my new brake pads so I found this rather large hill so I'm gonna try to hit 50 miles per hour down it and just gradually hold the brakes firmer and firmer and firmer and firmer until I come to a stop. And I'm gonna repeat this maybe five, five times, 10 times. I mean, I kind of looked it up, but it wasn't very too specific on how to do it. So I'm just gonna wing it and do what I think is right. So here we go. stopped now again I'm not slamming on the brakes I'm just giving it a nice firm push and it seems to be working the brakes are getting stickier and stickier so here we go <laughs> thought I was gonna hit you, didn't I? I thought I was gonna hit you too. <laughs> All right. Alrighty then. That's gonna conclude the break-in period of my new brake pads. Thanks for staying till the end of the video, and uh, we will see you on the next one. Stay tuned. More videos to come. Later, dudes.